Hi everyone, um, thanks for checking out this video. So this is going to be a video about how to simulate the uh, Latka Volterra competition model in Python. Um, also, just quick note, this is different from the Latka Volterra Predator Prey model. So if you guys are looking for the Latka Volterra Predator Prey model, I also have some videos on that model. But this is something different. Um, these guys are actually, uh, they were actually like productive enough that they actually have two famous models named after them. But yeah, this is not the predator prey model. This is the competition model. So basically this is um, a model of two species that are in competition with each other. Um, possibly like competing over like a shared resource or um, like shared territory or something like that. Um, also, if you guys haven't already seen it. I have another video explaining the basics of this model, um, what all the parameters mean, and, and how to solve for uh, the steady states. So if you guys haven't already seen it, I'm going to refer you to that video for like a basic introduction to the model. But this video is like a follow-up video about how to um, simulate it in Python. Um, but yeah, before we get to the Python code, I'll like quickly review. But again, if you guys want a deeper explanation, like please check out my previous video. But just for now, a quick review. So we have two um, animal species, could also be like a bacteria species or, or something else, but I think, uh, keeping things simple for this video, I'll, I'll just call it two animal species. So we have animal species 1, x1, and then um, animal species 2, x2. The uh, x1 and x2 are the variables that track the levels of uh, the populations of these two species. Um, and then we have, we have two differential equations uh, describing how the population levels of uh, these species are changing. So you guys may notice that based on the based on like the the form of these ODEs, it it looks like um, it looks a lot like the logistic growth model, which is a model of uh, the the population growth of um, of one species. So it it kind of looks like that, where we have a carrying capacity, but um, the carrying capacity for each for each species can be filled up by that species as well as the other species. So basically we have um, this like growth term out here and if it was just this, this is like an exponential growth term by itself, but then we have one minus this, uh, this carrying capacity fraction, which is basically like how full the carrying capacity is. And as this fraction gets closer and closer to one, this whole term approaches zero and the growth rate kind of like levels off. Um, as it approaches the carrying capacity. But again, instead of just being like x1 over k1, where k1 is the carrying capacity, instead of instead of just the carrying capacity being filled up by x1, it's filled up by x1 plus a1, which is some scaling factor times x2. So basically the carrying capacity for, um, for x1 can be filled up both by x1 and x2, because again, these species are uh, competing with each other. Um, and then, yeah, like for species two, it's like a mirror image of, uh, of species one, but it's got its own parameters. So instead of R1, it's R2 um, for the growth rate. Um, and we have, instead of A1, it's A2, and then instead of K1, K2 for the carrying capacity. Um, but yeah, that's just a super quick um, explanation. Um, if you guys want a deeper explanation as well as like showing how to find the steady states, please check out my uh, previous video. But yeah, with, with that being said, let's let's now get into the uh, the Python simulation. Um, okay, so the first thing we're going to do is just import the libraries we're going to be using. So we import numpy as np, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, and this is our ODE solver from scipy.integrate import ODE int. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm kind of hoping that maybe you guys have like seen my previous videos showing um, how to solve ODEs in Python. So... Um, Sorry if I seem like I'm rushing through any of this, but I'm hoping that some of you guys have like already uh, already watched my previous videos where I go like more in depth on like these um these like Python solutions to ODEs. Um, but yeah, it's like it's pretty straightforward. Um, very very uh, simple for the most part. So the first thing we're gonna do is just define our initial condition to work with. So um, I'm just gonna call this y zero. A lot of the notation I'm gonna be using is basically like conventional notation for ODE solvers. So usually we call like the initial condition um, like y zero, and then we'll call the output y, for example. But yeah, so this will just be the, the starting levels of species one and species two. So you guys can make this whatever you want. I'm just gonna make it um, like 10 and, and 10 for now. Um, so I'll say, uh, yeah, species 
one and uh, species two. Uh, maybe just to uh, like clarify to us, like this is this is the starting level of X one and then starting level of X two, and then um, I'm kind of keeping it unitless now. Like I don't I don't know exactly what's like realistic for the units, but maybe like units uh, in hundreds. So maybe this is like ten hundred of species one and ten hundred of species two. Um, yeah, I, I don't exactly know what's realistic. This isn't really like an ecology video. This is like a math modeling tutorial video. So I, I don't actually, I don't actually know what's realistic with like an actual animal population level, to be honest. But yeah, maybe, maybe this is like, um, units in the hundreds or something. Um, okay. So next thing we're going to do is define, uh, the, the time span that we're solving over. So we're just going to call this T and then we're going to use NumPy linspace. So we're going to say NP dot linspace, uh, going from time equals zero to time equals 50. Again, keeping the time unit list, this could be maybe like weeks or something could even be like years or something. Probably days is, is too short, but maybe like weeks or like months. Um, but yeah, just keeping keeping the time unit list for now. So time zero to fifty, and we want um, let's get a thousand time points in there. So basically, a thousand time points we're gonna be solving it, ranging from time equals zero to time equals fifty. And uh, yeah, I'll just put like uh, unit list time, maybe weeks or months. Uh, question mark because <laughs> I, I don't actually. I'm not actually an ecologist, so to be honest, I really don't know what's realistic in terms of like actual animal populations. Um, but yeah. Um, so the next thing we need to do is just define some values for our parameters. So I'm just going to say params here. Um, okay, R1. Uh, so just to start, I'm just going to, just for simplicity, I'm, I'm going to just make it symmetrical for like our first run of the simulation. I'm going to make all the... Uh, Species two parameters, the same as species one, but then we'll change that up and see what happens when we kind of change it around too. So I'll say R2 um, equals one. Uh, again, you guys can make these whatever you want. Um, I think it's I think it's good to play around with them, you know, experiment around with these parameters, see how uh, the results change and stuff. But yeah, I'm just gonna make it uh, kind of simple for now. And then I'll make the carrying capacities um, both 100 for now. Um, okay, so that's our parameters, and then yeah, next thing to do is just put all the parameters in a in a parameters list. So I'm just gonna say params equals um, r1, r2, a1, a2, and k1, k2. Basically, we're just putting them all on the list because we're gonna be passing them into the actual um, like the actual ODE solver at some point. So we need them to be kind of uh, packaged together. Um, okay, so hopefully that's all simple so far. Um, the next thing we need to do is actually write um, write the ODE function in Python. So uh, I'm just going to say def uh, sim. You guys can call this function whatever you want. I'm just calling it sim uh, to keep it simple. Um, it's going to take uh, it's going to take variables t and params where this this t is going to be the uh, time points we're solving over params is the uh, list of parameters and variables is like the the current levels of um of the two variables x1 and x2 um so then basically what we need to do is like unpack all these things locally within the function so we're going to say x1 equals variables zero um maybe I'll leave a comment you know good practice to leave some comments here um species one, uh, population level. And then basically same thing for X2, we just unpack it locally um, within the function. Um, species two population level. We also need to unpack all of the uh, parameters locally within the function. Um, Cause we, we've defined them out here, but we need to, we need to actually like unpack them like, like locally, you know what I mean? So we're going to say R1 equals param zero, first element of the uh, params array right here. Um, R2 equals uh, params one. Um, A1 equals params two. A2 equals params three. Um, 
k1 equals params 4 and k2 equals params 5. Okay, just, yeah, again, unpacking everything locally here. Um, so the next thing we need to do is we need to just write down these equations um, in Python. Uh, so basically we just need to like, we need to take these and just type, type them out into Python. Um, okay, so I'm going to say dx1 dt. It's going to be the first one here, uh, the first differential equation. So that's going to be um, r1 times, sorry, x1 times parentheses uh, 1 minus um, parentheses again for the, the top of the fraction, x1 plus a1 times x2, close parentheses, and then we need the bottom of the fraction, um, k1. Uh, did we get all that right? Yeah, okay. And then we just do the same thing for um, the x2 equation. So x2 equals r2 times x2. Um, and then just change these. a2, x1, k2. Um, okay, and then the last thing we need for this function here is we need to just return, we need to return a list of these two, um, these two ODs that we just wrote down. And just make sure you're keeping the order the same. Basically, whatever whatever order you're defining the initial conditions, that's the same order that you're unpacking the variables and the same order that you're um, returning returning the OD solutions. Um, otherwise, things will just get scrambled. So we're, we have x1 and x2 here. Um, okay. Yeah, so now that's, that's our function for the... Uh, th this is basically just a, a function that we're going to be passing into the OD solver. And then, yeah, so now what we do next is we need to just put everything all together into the solver, and then uh, Python will, you know, take care of the rest of the actual solution for us. So I'm going to, I'm going to call the output of the solver y. Um, this is going to be, uh, this is going to include the output, like, both for x1 and x2. It's kind of a convention with, like, um, solving ODs to just call the output y. Um, so I'm just going to stick with that for now. And I'm going to say ODE int... Um, the name of the function, so I called it sim, you guys can call, you can, you can call whatever you want, I call it sim, so just the name of the function, um, our initial condition list, remember we defined that up here, y0, that's our initial condition list, um, t, remember that's the, uh, that's the time, that's the time span we're solving over, um, 0 to 50, and we have a um, 1,000 time points uh, in between. Um, okay, so yeah, function, initial condition, uh, times we're solving over. Okay, this one, a um, little bit of a weird syntax here, but to pass in the actual params we're using, we're going to say args equals parentheses, params, comma, close parentheses. A little bit of weird syntax there, but this is basically just how we pass in our um, list of the params that we defined up here. Um... Okay, so this basically gives um, it 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 gives like output in the form of a matrix where the rows are all of the time points that we're solving over, and then it has two columns. So the first column is going to be the solutions for x one, and the second column is going to be the solutions for x two. So it's basically just going to be um, you know what I'll even I'll even just print it here to show you guys so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, Yeah, so it kind of condensed it, but yeah, basically we have, like, all of the rows are the time points we're solving over, and that's got the x1 solutions in um, column column 1, um, and the x2 solutions in column column 2. Um, okay, so let's actually, like, plot this and see if we can, like, visualize the results here. So I'm going to be a little bit lazy at this point and just copy and paste some code. Um, yeah, just copy and paste some uh, matplotlib code because it's uh, annoying to have to write all this stuff again. But yeah, so this is basically just plotting plotting the solutions. Um, so this part this part here, um, x1.plot uh, here, so we're, we're basically plotting um, 
the uh, the time points and then the solutions for x1. So it's just y, all of the rows, that's what this uh, colon means here, all of the rows for the first column, column index zero. So that's giving us all of um, the solutions for x1 at every time point. And then we do the same thing, um, we do the same thing for uh, the second column, column index one, that's giving us the solutions for uh, x2 here. Uh, okay, so let's, uh, let's pot this out and take a look. Yeah, so it looks like it, it worked okay. Um, yeah, this is what this solution looks like. Um, okay, so let's try changing things around a bit now. Let's try experimenting around with some of these uh, parameters and, and stuff. So, okay, first, let's just see what happens if we change up the initial conditions. Let's say, what if we have, like, what if we start with, like, 100 of species 1 and then only 5 of species 2? What will happen in that case? Again, I'm just, you know, experimenting around here, playing around with some of these, uh, some of these initial conditions. So in this case, we get, yeah, we get kind of an interesting solution, right? Um, yeah, kind of an interesting solution. So the, the, like now, um, there's kind of an initial drop in, in species one, but then it eventually recovers. And then species two just kind of drops off. And then this ends up being that species one like outcompetes species two. So we're left in the end with like only species one and species two has, uh, has died out over here. So again, just kind of uh, playing around here. Let's let's set it back again to ten and ten. But let's try like playing around with some different. Um, let's say we make it like different parameters. Let's say that, that x one and x two have like actually different parameters that are not exactly the same. So let's make this. We'll make this five, um, and we'll make this. Um, I don't know, one fifty or something, and then maybe make this two. Again, just showing you guys um, what's kind of like playing around different parameters and stuff. Yeah, so again, kind of interesting result. Again, in this case, we see with, with those parameters, um, X1 is out competing X2, and we end up with like only X1 and, and X2 kind of dies out. Um, okay, so again, I encourage you guys to like play around with the different parameters and stuff, like see what happens when you change up the model a bit. But, um, so the last thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to test out like the steady state we solved for, um, that we solved for in the uh, previous video. So I'm actually going to co copy and paste this in. Um, so if you guys haven't watched my previous video, I recommend you guys to check that out. Like basically I, I showed how to solve, uh, how to solve for all the steady states. Basically there's like three like kind of trivial steady states and then one like non-trivial steady state. So, so this is going to be um, like the non-trivial steady state. So I just called it x1 sub s and then, uh, or sorry, not sub, but like x1 underscore s and then x2 underscore s for like steady state. Um, yeah, this is, this is the non-trivial uh, steady state in terms of the uh, model parameters. So let's see what happens when we set the initial condition um, to be the steady state. Um, so I'm going to say we're starting off uh, with the steady state here. And if we solve for this correctly, we should see like no change in the model from the steady state because again, that's what it means to be a steady state. Basically, at, at, these, at, at these values for the parameters, the ODEs are equal to zero. So we should see uh, no change in the model starting from this uh, steady state. But this is a good sanity check to like make sure that our solution um, is actually correct. So uh, let's give it a try. Yeah, so just like we thought, um, when we plug in like the steady state uh, values for the parameters, we just see flat lines, no change in the model. They're just, the population just stay at their levels and nothing uh, changes with them. Because uh, yeah, it's a, it's a steady state, so nothing is changing in uh, the system. Um, okay, so that's really all I have for you guys today. Um, again, I encourage you guys to like, Try it for yourself. Check out different uh, different solutions for like different parameter values. Kind of play around with it so you get some like intuition for the model. But um, yeah, that's really all I have for now. Um, I'll put the code up on my GitHub like usual if you guys want to download it and uh, try it. Uh, it'll be up on my GitHub. Um, yeah, and if, if you guys have any questions or anything, uh, just let me know in the comments and I'll try to answer them. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, see you guys next time.